Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Living Up to Potential, Optimizing Oracle Cloud to Increase User Adoption and Value. My name is Jordan Future Burmeister. I'll be the moderator for today's session. We are gonna go ahead and get going just because we have a ton of great content packed into a short 45 minutes here. Uh, so as people are filtering in, we'll just get through a few of our housekeeping items. Um, a couple of things, attendees have been placed on mute for the duration of the presentation. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them either in the chat or in the Q&A function. We will try to leave a few minutes for Q&A at the end. Um, today's webinar recording, as well as all past Alir webinars, are available on our Alir website, alir.com. We've got a ton of great content on there as well, blogs, webinars, our newsletter signups, and great content from our SMEs, Jason and our June today. As we get going for the agenda, we are going to cover some quick introductions about our presenters and about Alir. We're going to talk a little bit about understanding where you're at in your cloud journey and what we define as day two in that cloud journey. We're going to do a little how-to approach to optimization, as well as talk through some optimization stories of past customers we've worked with and all the different ways that they've used optimization to apply to their organization and to getting more value out of their cloud application. Again, we will try to leave a couple minutes for questions at the end, and you can submit those either in the chat or in the Q&A function. With that, we'll kind of get into introductions here. And again, I mentioned briefly, my name is Jordan Puger Burmeister. I'm the marketing manager at Alir. I'll be helping moderate today's session, as well as I'm here as a resource for you guys for any questions that you have regarding what um, resources we have available. Like I said, those newsletters, blog posts, webinars, all things Alir content and all the great information our SMEs have to provide. I'm your gal. With that, I will hand it over to the real people you're here to see today, and I'll hand that over to Jason. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I am Alir's Cloud ERP practice lead. I've been serving in the role the past um, about seven years now. Um, prior to that, I was a on the uh, PeopleSoft delivery team as a consultant working on upgrades um, and other various projects. Um, which you'll hear a lot today about um, transitioning from on-prem to Oracle Cloud. I've done that myself. I've been with Alir since 2011 um, and been with um, many customers along the way and had a great time kind of learning and growing with, with all of them. So um, my other counterpart today on the webinar is Arjun. Arjun, you want to intro yourself? Sure, thanks, Jason. Hi, everyone. This is Arjun Krishna Prasad here. I lead the strategic advisory services practice here at Elir. I've been with Elir for over three years now, and I have about 16 years of consulting and industry experience. So over the years, I've worked on several multi-pillar ERP transformations uh, in Oracle EBS, PeopleSoft, and cloud applications. My practice here helps clients ensure the new system aligns with their objectives and business strategies while kind of adopting uh, the modern best practices. I'm happy to meet you all in the session, and Jason, over to you. Uh, just a quick um, little recap of about Alir. If you're new, for a new name to you all, we are an Oracle Cloud Service Implementer. We are an Oracle-only um, focused firm. Um, we help customers become, you know, really youth empowered with the tool. Our, our, our mission is to be a trusted advisor and really build long-term relationships to help customers as they grow and expand and adopt the tool. Um, found in 2005, the last 18 years have been focused with a, uh, a PeopleSoft presence. And then about eight years ago, we started building out our cloud teams and I'm on that cloud ERP team as well. So um, helping customers with that transition to cloud. Um, we have proprietary tool sets to assist those PeopleSoft to Oracle Cloud um, organizations that are on that journey. Um, and then a dedicated team of Oracle certified consultants to help, um, you know, everyone get the full value out of the tool um, with our with our successful um, application implementation methodology. So um, we've been fortunate enough to complete about 50 Oracle Cloud projects, um, quite a few PeopleSoft projects um, in our experience. Um, and we're really looking forward to help share some of our um, knowledge and expertise in the area um, that you all might be interested in hearing about. Um, we have five main service offerings within different areas of, of the company focused on, like we mentioned, Oracle Cloud, PeopleSoft. The Treasury um, is kind of a unique, unique space within terms of Oracle and how our company was founded. Um, so we have a dedicated team there. As Arjun mentioned, he's a leader of the advisory services team, which helps customers with their um, business process and uh, enablement strategies. 
And then our managed services team that's um, finding ways to help customers with support um, in an ever-changing IT landscape. So that's kind of how our company works cross-functionally uh, together for everyone's journey. Um, but today we're really talking about Oracle Cloud. Um, we've gotten the pleasure to work with multiple customers on different variation parts of their journeys within this the solution um, from implementation to support to optimization and, and better leveraging the product, um, which is really what we're going to focus on today. And we've had, I myself have had really lots of hands-on experience with customers post-implementation, finding the value of the tool um, through additional functionality, reworking solutions, um, and it's just expanding their reach and supporting them as everyone goes through this journey. And that's what, another message we want to hit today is um, moving to the cloud is not a one and done kind of idea. Um, and we're helping customers, you know, I'm five years in, you know, still stabilize and become familiar with the product and really looking about changing their operations to adopt leading practice software. So we're going to have some specific case studies. We're going to talk about these clients later. Um, but right now we're going to talk about how do we understand that journey to cloud. So let's start with your cloud journey and discuss what your roadmap looks like and how we envision this at Ellier. At Ellier, we consider the cloud journey in number of days. So many of you might have been part of large software transformations and would probably have heard of day two, that is after you've been live and you're operational. We have taken that analogy down to day zero, and I'm going to start there uh, as we explain this. Day zero is when you're still on your on-prem system your existing applications and back office systems. Spending time to optimize your on-prem application allows your organization to take advantage of new functionalities, decustomize processes, and prepare your organization for day one. Now, day one is the initial cloud implementation. It's about getting live on cloud with a strategy that works for you, whether it's a single module or the whole application. Day one is all about laying that foundation, the foundation that will set you up for a fully optimized organization. After your initial implementation, that is where day two comes along and you really optimize. Day two is about gaining more value from your cloud application by either expanding your cloud footprint, adding new features, adding new modules, or you optimize existing business processes that you implemented in cloud. What we are going to talk about here today is day one to day two transition and how you can better prepare for your initial cloud implementation and at least approach and experience optimizing cloud for clients. Now let's take a quick poll on where you all stand today in your cloud journey. Thanks, Arjun. It should be available now. So we're going to ask where are you at on your cloud journey? Are you day zero is planning for cloud transformation? day one, so in that initial implementation, day two, or maybe even unsure. You do have the option to select multiple um, in case you're maybe on day zero for ERP and day one for HCM or across different applications. You have different maturity levels. That will be up in the chat as well, so we'll leave it up as we keep going here. Thanks, Jordan. All right, now let's take a look at some of the questions that you hear from our clients on day two. Are we taking full advantage of the capabilities of cloud applications? Is our current configurations aligned with industry's best practices? Are there areas within our business processes that can be enhanced to boost efficiency, streamline operations, and improve overall efficiency? Is our ERP investment yielding the necessary insights and data to facilitate well-informed decision within an organization? This mainly focuses on your reporting capabilities. Are there any underutilized features that would present substantial value for our team? Are there any additional application modules that may benefit us? So keeping these uh, questions in mind, let's take a look at some of the key business drivers that aligns to these questions. So let's look at these key business drivers. Now, to begin with, uh, 
you had an incomplete deployment of cloud applications. This can lead to substantial missed opportunities and underutilization of cloud's extensive capabilities. Not only this limits your organization's ability to seize the benefit of cloud, but can also have financial and operational implications. Next, a lack of clarity on how your resources are currently utilizing cloud applications. This implies that there is a significant gap in your understanding of how these valuable resources are making use of the application at this moment. This absence of insight can lead to various challenges and impede your ability to make informed decisions about resource allocation, process optimization, and overall productivity enhancements. Next, insufficiency in training related to cloud functionalities and tools. This indicates a knowledge gap among employees, which can result in resource management, higher error rates, decreased productivity, and security vulnerabilities. Addressing application errors stemming from improper usage, deviations from best practices, enhancements, or custom developments is crucial to maintain operational efficiency. Next, inconsistencies within business processes. This refers to variations from established procedures and best practices. These discrepancies can lead to inefficiencies, difficulty in tracking, managing tasks, impacting overall productivity, and ability to achieve desired outcome consistently. Finally, not fully leveraging the cloud features and functionalities. This implies that an organization is not leveraging the full spectrum of capabilities provided within the cloud platform. This can result in missed opportunities for efficiency, scalability, cost savings, innovation, limiting the overall value derived from your cloud investment. Incorporating some of these business drivers in your cloud optimization strategy discussions can help your stakeholders understand the importance of addressing these issues and how it can positively impact the organization's cloud investment. Now, let's take a look at some of the optimization themes. So, these are some of the optimization themes from LA's perspective, beginning with optimization, which involves assessing your current cloud footprint and providing recommendations for improvements, including reporting, testing automation, data analytics, extended IT support, to name a few. An optimization assessment involves a comprehensive evaluation of your cloud applications with the goal of identifying opportunities for improvements in both system and also your business processes. This may entail reconfiguration, integration of new functionalities, and elimination of manual processes. All of this geared towards realizing the true potential of your cloud system. Personalization could be utilized uh, uh, as part of optimization. Uh, tools like Redwood Design Studio and Autocomplete to improve user efficiency and user experience. Extending your application to meet your business needs while reducing business reliance on IT. Addressing training gaps can boost your confidence and reduce errors and improve overall productivity and contributing to better ROI on your cloud investment. Managed services involves capitalizing on flexibility and cost saving through collaboration with vendors for comprehensive application management and maintenance. Next, Expansion entails growing your Oracle Cloud footprint. This is by implementing targeted modules, enhancing reporting, data analytics, adopting AI and uh, digital assistance, implementing testing automation at a pace that suits your organization, all while reducing the total cost of ownership. Finally, sunsetting legacy system involves aiding your data retention strategy for historical reporting, data warehousing, and decommissioning of legacy application. Now let's take a look at Elure's approach to cloud optimization assessment, keeping this optimization themes in mind. Here we have the various uh, activities and tasks involved in a cloud optimization assessment based on our approach. Beginning with mobilization phase, 
we will meet with your executive team to discuss priorities, challenges, and key business drivers that we addressed already. The kickoff session allows us to understand your business case for a cloud optimization assessment, identifying high level opportunities to maximize the value you receive from your cloud investment, and also establish decision criteria that will guide your next steps. Next, we'll review your current processes to uncover pain points, issues, gaps, manual tasks, workarounds, redundancies. We'll conduct a process maturity assessment exercise where your process leads will rate your current processes across five critical enablers in design, metrics, ownership, execution, and infrastructure. This assessment will guide us in shaping your future state process maturity level. Additionally, we'll consider any unique requirements that you have and establish best practices for your specific use case. Moving on to current state system analysis, we'll focus on your core cloud configurations. This is to identify any deviations from best practices. We'll assess your technical architecture and integration strategy to determine if it's optimized for cloud. Additionally, we'll gauge the effectiveness of your reporting strategy in providing accurate and timely insights. We'll also consider any new features and functionalities since your go live and add it to the areas of interest for your requirements. This discussion will extend to your support team structure, allocation, and their skills. Leveraging a cloud experience will help you align resources for an optimal result. The next phase is the solution analysis phase. Here we'll assist in prioritizing your requirements and update it with uh, recommended solutions, effort, and cost. We'll also develop a roadmap plan and provide you with a project timeline. For the next steps, we will summarize your business challenges and offer our point of view for high level recommendations and present an optimization plan. Now let's take a look at some of Elias cloud optimization stories. Go to you, Jason. Thanks, Arjun. So we just went through a series of kind of the day two definition, and we talked about questions we hear, business drivers we talk to customers about, and these are all conversations that Arjun and I are having. Um, and really what we're, what we're, the point is we're making is the, the questions we hear are really just around the confusion and the uncertainty with what happened with the cloud implementation. Those business drivers related to really trying to find the value which was sold on how to use the tool more effectively. And then those themes generally kind of fall into the category of things that potentially might have been pushed out of the initial rollout due to de scoping um, or budgetary reasons or whatever it might be, um, or it was just focused on you know core configuration and setup, which is great. Um, but those are the the themes are those optimization things that find the 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 uh, the good parts of the the SaaS based solution, trying to have enhanced analytics, more automation, um, you know, decrease um, FTE like manual processing things like that. And, and those are the kind of conversations we're having with customers post go live on how to use cloud more effectively. And, and we wanted to take some time today to really just dive into a couple um, customers we've worked with over the past um, number of years and some new ones. Um, we have quite a few more stories in this. Um, and we've done quite a bit of work um, in this in this day two category, um, which we wanted to focus on today. So we really view ourselves as having a better understanding is we all are learning the tool and, and how to use it more effectively. Um, first customer I wanted to chat about was um, Siva Financial, which I was engaged with back in 2017, um, pretty early on in our cloud journey and build out as everyone else was. Um, you know, we, we got to introduce to them post, post go live as part of stabilization efforts. They had some concerns that they wanted to validate with Oracle and, and, and with us as a partner. Um, to talk about their next steps and how they could better utilize ERP um, for their financial processing. So um, we did an optimization assessment with them um, to help validate those concerns and define that the right solution um, for them to move forward and really find that end-to-end -end processing. Um, and that really turned into a, a relationship that has grown over the years, and we, we still work with them today. Um, you know, looking as their go-to partner, but we've really helped them find some specific things around ERP and, and looked at, um, you know, the bank connectivity components of um, transaction processing um, to really streamline that end-to-end -end process and complete transactions. 
um, building out integrations for them to leverage their third-party applications from their business perspective, help them grow as they've expanded through M&A activity and, and expansions um, through onboarding new entities and, and building out you know, their use of the Oracle application into, into you know, multi-currencies and, and things of that nature. Um, help them with different tax configuration components, um, revisiting some of their receivables. And then last year, we helped with an automation of their on-bill pay with how they do customer billing. So we've helped them with uh, delivered lockbox processing, um, leverage the tool again to build a basically a no-touch back office process, um, you know, leveraging delivered integration points with a service provider um, to kind of really find those, um, you know, no-touch end-to-end processes as, automatic, as automated as possible. Um, it's really interesting for them because they, it allows that flexibility in the tool um, for them to really reduce those manual processes and allow their team to become more analytical um, with all the advanced reporting tools that come with Oracle out of the box and then, um, you know, really helps them kind of streamline that process. So um, as you can see on the slide, we've had quite a few different um, optimization engagements with them. We continue to support them through managed services. They're continuing to build out and grow their tools um, in Oracle. Um, and it's been a really good partnership to watch them from doing a, an optimization assessment, build a roadmap, define how they're going to go forward, and then really start to attack that uh, that roadmap with targeted projects, small investments to really find better value out of the ERP post go live. So um, first story I wanted to kind of share. Another longtime customer earlier, oh, back to PeopleSoft days, um, where our relationship really began, but from a cloud perspective, um, we help them again within within uh, a pre-implementation assessment, so like a day zero assessment to understand um, if Oracle Cloud was going to be the right fit for them, um, which turned into a, a implementation through um, multiple rollouts across the different various HCM um, core functionality benefits, comp uh, compensation, payroll, um, was a large payroll project um, for the Idaho National Labs. Um, and then since then, we've helped them through various optimization targeted um, improvements um, as they're trying to decommission their PeopleSoft footprint and move fully onto Oracle Cloud across all different business processes. We've been there to help them and support, um, which will continue into next year and um, really take in a cloud journey with them again over the last um, five to six years as they've gone through the various stages of their journey to cloud. Another success story we want to chat about um, is a healthcare nonprofit arm um, who we've had a relationship with since 2020. Um, they're more unique in the sense they have very specific things they were looking for help with. We started building a relationship through Oracle um, and really started targeted optimization projects with them, looking at um, building out their procurement processing, um, helping them leverage automation and integration through punch out catalogs um, to help their organization find that um, value and ability to let the um, um, their employee base become more efficient and self-sufficient in the tool. Um, from there, we did another optimization project implementing the Oracle Financials suite to help them with project costing and better understand how they're spending dollars strategically on initiatives um, based on budgets or where um, they are building capital assets and just doing fundraising initiatives. Um, to better leverage um, the tool for reporting purposes. Um, and this involved building complex integrations with third-party applications um, for them to streamline that reporting and actual tr cost processing. Um, I really love that project. I'm a, I'm a project manager at heart um, and implementing the project solution of Oracle, again, with that breadth of footwear, foot, um, footprints that the software has across all different functionalities. Um, that's where those end-to-end -end transactions become more efficient because you could take a single data entry point and really tr transform it through an entire P2P process, your financial reporting process, and then um, you know order to cash and all those other areas you have within a single solution. Um, from those two projects, we were able to actually complete an optimization assessment, as Arjun mentioned prior, um, to really analyze their core financial processes, find a roadmap, find opportunities, um, find their pain points. Um, and have built a roadmap for improvement to help them really find enhanced value through automation, um, again, connectivity, and um, reducing and streamlining those manual processes. We talked a lot about 
disconnected process and people unsure of how they're doing things. That really stems from people not following um, what we like to call best practices and the tool as the tool is designed to really um, streamline and find that value. I mean, when we have, and that comes from the, the from the uh, the change management of the implementation and how the, the software was adopted. Um, so finding other ways to have that happen um, really helps from a um, usability perspective and really can help with support and making sure that the software is using as best of its ability for the organization itself. And then the last case study we want to talk about is a more recent customer of ours is from this year. Um, we did an expansion project from e for EBCI, which is a member of the Cherokee Nation um, in, in the East Band um, as they operate on different um, casinos and different entities and operations that they deal with. Um, so we were connected to them through Oracle as they needed to do an expansion project and they're building out their business line and we helped them um, with doing so and setting up new legal entities. And what we found for them is we actually started down a path of just doing a, an implementation of new lines of business, but realized that we needed to, to um, pivot our approach and do some optimization assessment work to understand that um, their enterprise needed some, some tweaking to it, some, some ability to become more flexible for them um, to make sure that they're ready for success and growth as they're targeted to do. So we're able to work hand in hand um, with some additional training um, and validation and then um, set this up for success, not only with the new expansion project, but also their current operations as they begin to stabilize. They went live just over a year ago. Um, and as you've seen from our other case studies, it's a multi-leg journey. So um, we're looking forward to the, the partnership we've started with them um, and they've had an ability now to kind of rethink how things were implemented, um, set themselves up for success. Um, and now they have you know empowered business users with tools at hand to better use the application, um, become more efficient and, uh, um, you know, set themselves up for success. So kind of a newer story for us um, and, you know, exciting about building a long term relationship for them. So that kind of wraps up our case studies and where we're at now is what we understand. So we talked a lot about um, questions and confusion from initial rollout. Um, needing key business drivers to to justify the optimization efforts to continue to use the platform, expand upon it, build out that what's next with the Oracle modules. Um, as you know, new features, new functionality come out every quarter with Oracle Cloud. Lots of R and D is going into the application for all of these new features. It's tough to stay up to date with all of these things, all of the new features that your organization has potential to take advantage of. And then we've also talked about some issues from an initial implementation, a misunderstanding of requirements. The thing with Oracle, the SaaS solution being that it's not um, developer enabled, it has lots of configuration options. Um, and that, that's the flexibility of the tool. So if things are not understood from a business requirement standpoint, you could go down the wrong path of configuration. So it's important for us to all um, you know, work together to understand what's the requirement, what are the definitions, what do the values mean that are in the application to really ensure that the, the application is set up correctly for your ex future growth um, and your organization in general. So it's not it's not a cookie cutter solution. It doesn't work right out of the box for one person. You really need to think about what's the requirement, how do we configure that correctly, um, and really set up for success. That's the beauty of the SaaS solution. Um, and how you know customers are really finding that that value out of it. So, um, and these are where we find that most of our customers are in the day two areas, really trying to figure out the path forward and um, kind of setting that up for next steps. So, with that, we have one more poll. Thank you, Jason. We just launched it in the chat here. So. Following up on what Jason said, what are the current issues your organization is facing with Oracle Cloud? And you can select all that apply. Is there a need for process improvement, a need for a roadmap to figure out what's next with your application? Maybe as Jason mentioned, configuration issues from your initial implementation or something isn't working as you thought it would. Users might not be confident in the application. Maybe there's not enough bandwidth to support your application. Or as Jason mentioned, there's a ton of new features coming out with those updates. Maybe you need testing support or structure to test your new updates. What are 
some of the pain points you are seeing. And we'll give everyone a couple minutes to answer that as we hand it back to you, Jason. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Um, great call outs. Um, you know, lots. Hopefully, everyone found this really interesting. Um, we love having these conversations. We talk to you know customers all the time, and we we love to just get to know who you are, where you're at in your journey, and, and we we like to call these optimization discovery sessions that we're always looking to have with you know customers that are on Oracle that really might have some of these things floating around in their minds about where they're at, what they're doing. You know, are we getting the right value? Do we have the right tools in place? Um, we thought about this implementation correctly, so. Um, we have a bunch of great resources on our social media platforms and our websites. Um, we also have a big group of people, and myself included, going to Cloud World. Um, we're really excited about that. It's a great conference. It's a great opportunity to learn about what's coming down the line in terms of new features, new functionality. Also, it's a good opportunity to hear about current customers with their journey and what they're doing. So I highly recommend any of you that are going to please Feel free to reach out to us, look for our social media, which will have all the information about where we're going to be and um, would love to meet you um, and talk about your cloud journey and, and what we can do to help. I love helping all of our customers every day with whatever they can. We do put out a cloud newsletter, um, which you can feel free to subscribe to on our information, um, which does highlight some of those new features and functionality. We try to keep up with all of the release notes and all the, the key things to, to look for in there. Um, for those opt-in features to to really understand what's coming out in the application, how's it going to better impact your organization? We do host other webinars, events, conferences where I um, we're presenting at, and we uh, we really love to to build the network and um, get to know everyone that's on the tool. So um, with that, we do have some minutes left, but that really ends the uh, the webinar we have for today. We like to keep it short and sweet. Um, and interesting for everybody um, and be mindful of everyone's time. So um, we do have some time for Q&A. If there's anything in the chat, Jordan or Arjun, if you could let me yeah. know. Um, it does look like we have one thing in the chat. So um, most of our attendees today are really struggling with a roadmap for what's next with their application. How do they get that conversation started internally if they want to start to build a roadmap for what's next with their application? So yeah, usually when we have these conversations, there is a um, an issues list or a whiteboard somewhere with issues on it, or um, or you know forums or different tools that say this is what we're struggling with. Um, and I hate that because it sounds really negative, but like where are we struggling? Because usually that's where we can find the most value quickly um, to help with um, finding that improvement, and then. And then the bigger conversations around alignment and adoption um, kind of naturally fall into place beyond that. Um, but I, it's really about just kind of write down, you know, what we thought. Look back at your initial implementation. Were things left on the table? Um, do you have the right training in place? Do you have any sort of quick reference guides or support on how to use the tool as you do onboard new resources? Did they know what to do with Oracle? Um, you know, those are kind of things that we find are really common. Um, that have the most that don't seem, you know, and these these don't have to be big, large initiatives. Um, but really starting to look at what tools do you have in place, and how are you how are you set up for success in the future? Thank you, Jason. It looks like there's some popping up in the chat. It says, "Do we have clients that have union employees?" utilize Oracle payroll and time and labor. Initially at the implementation of their Cloud HCM, they weren't sure of the maturity level of those products. Yes, we do have clients. Actually, the, the Idaho National Labs, who I mentioned, um, you know, has multiple unions and we have, I think, a few other customers that are currently going on that have a union um, as a part of their implementation scope. Mm -hmm. I personally, on the ERP side, I'm not a union expert. Um, I have implemented payroll. But uh, as a project manager, but that doesn't well make me an expert. Um, but Craig, that's a great question. And I think we could definitely get you someone that would be able to better answer your question. But I know the complexities with the unions, the agreements, the CBAs, and um, the time schedules are where we built out the most accelerators from our cloud tool set um, and really helped customers do that, um, um, that path to cloud.
great question. Definitely great question. Any other questions from the group before we wrap things up today? Oh, it says also, have you helped with Oracle total rewards reporting in HCM? I would have to look at that. I am not familiar with that HCM solution. Um, I should say our HCM team is very large and very experienced at Allure. Um, so we can definitely take that offline, Craig, and um, get you some information on that. Cool. Yeah, yeah we have definitely done benefits and pay bonus reporting for employees of service. Uh, we can certainly talk about that. Well, it sounds like we have a couple. Oh, I think we might have lost Jordan there for a second. Oh, there we go. Sorry about there that, you. guys. Um, we will be leaving this chat open for the next 10 minutes here, just for the remainder of the webinar time. So if there are additional questions, feel free to submit them in through the chat. We'll make sure that our SMEs, Jason and Arjun, as well as our larger SME network get those. Um, with that, as Jason mentioned, we do have a monthly cloud newsletter. Stay up to date on all things Oracle Cloud. We put new feature highlights. We have a new ebook coming out around intelligent document recognition. That is awesome. If I do say so myself, Jason helped with a ton of that content. Um, new case studies, new webinars, all those great things coming out monthly, as well as follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Twitter. We post a lot of event highlights there as well. Our tag is at Alir Inc. With that, we want to thank everyone for joining today and thank Jason and Arjun for their time this afternoon. We hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and thanks for joining us.